So it's been a while. Let's get to this. First one, order of operations. So let me just make sure I have my pen. Let's pick purple. And not there, but somewhere right here. Okay, so it's three to the third power minus sixteen divided by four times five plus six. All right, just make sure that this decimal is in the middle a little bit more in the middle. All right, so order of operation tells us that we should do parentheses first, none here. So check. Exponents is seconds. Is there one? Yes, there is. 3 to the third is 3 times 3, which is 9 times 3 is 27. And I shall copy the rest. Again, a lot of you uh, do it this way, but some of you do it, don't do it in lines. You know, one line, etc., etc. It just makes it a little messier when you do it all over the place okay so try to keep it uh, in line so exponents are gone next multiplication or division whichever comes first from left to right and we have a division and a multiplication and we're going to do division first because that comes first so that 27 stays the same minus let's take care of this 16 divided by 4 is 4 times this 5 which we're going to copy bring down and the 6 we're going to bring down so we're still not done with this multiplication and division because there is a multiplication here. So it's 27 minus, and this comes to be 20 plus 6. Now all the multiplications, all the divisions are gone, leaving me with addition or subtraction. Which one are we going to do first? The one that comes first from left to right. And it's this. Okay. Uh, 27 minus 20 is 7. Bring down the 6. We can add these two now gives us 13 and that's how you should be doing it okay uh, let's do the next one because apparently I made four of them okay parentheses 7 squared minus 56 divided by 4 to the second power plus 120 times 6 yikes Nice numbers, Mr. Cho. All right, so let's do inside the parentheses, okay? Inside the parentheses first. So inside the parentheses, we have parentheses, exponents. So we have to take care of this guy here first. So 7 to the second power is 49. Okay, I changed that. And I'm not going to do anything else. I could have, but I'm not. Just to show you step by step what you should be doing. Still can't do anything. I'm going to just take care of what's inside the parentheses. Inside the parentheses, now I have a choice between subtraction and division. I have to, uh, what do you call, do division. So parentheses, 49, and 56 divided by 4 is 14. So the second power, plus 120, times 6. Would it, would it have mattered if you did 120 times 6? No, but I'm just trying to show you the steps. So again, 49 minus 14 is, I don't know, 5, 4 minus 1 is 3. Okay, to the second power plus 120 times 6. I'm finally going to be over... Uh, 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 my parentheses are finally done. There's nothing else inside the parentheses to do. Now I can take care of exponents. And there is an exponent, this one, that was outside all this time, just waiting for us to finish the inside for it to uh, become active. All right, so now we're going to do 35 times 35, which is, is I have no idea. Okay, so take... Take a few seconds, do it on the side, and you should have gotten 1,225. How does he know that? I use a calculator. Uh, so 35 to 35 is 1,225. So 35 to the second power ends up being this, plus 120 times 6. So now all my parents are gone, all my exponents are gone. I can finally do multiplication or division. Do you see any of those? I see one right here. 1, 1, 2, 5, plus the product of 120 and 6. Let's see, 0, 12, 720. All my multiplication and division are gone. I finally can do addition or subtraction, if any. And there is 1, 1 2, 2, 5 plus 720. 5 and 0 is, is uh, sorry, 5, 2 and 2 is 4. Final answer, 1, 9, 4, 5. Check, check. Next one, 25 plus 6 to the second power times 4 minus 89. 
parentheses. Oops, close this, close this. No, no, close. Right. So, parentheses, none. Exponents, yes, there is. Right here. So, 25 plus 6 to the second power is 36. Let's leave the 4 here. Let's leave minus 89. So, I did nothing except that. Exponents are gone. Multiplication or division. Do you see either or? Yes, I do. There's a multiplication right here. So you do 25 copy plus you copy. Take care of this, which is 24, 144 minus copy the subtraction 89. Done, done. No more multiplication or division. Now it's addition or subtraction. Whichever one comes first from left to right, and this happens to come first. 25 plus 144 is, uh, let's see, 5, 6, 169 minus 89. Okay, so I can subtract that and that gives me a 80 as my final answer. Okay, one more. I don't know why I gave you so many. Well, not too many actually. 9 to the second power divided by 3 to the third divided by 3 plus 1 to the third. Wow, lots of threes. So, inside the parentheses, there are parentheses, so let's take care of that. Inside the parentheses, you can't do division yet. You have to take care of the exponents. So 9 to the second power is 81, divided by 3 to the third power, which is 3, times 3, times 3, which is 27. Copy the rest. Don't do anything. Inside my parentheses, 81 divided by 27. Now I can do. It's 3. Nothing else to do in my parentheses, so I don't even need it. Copy the rest. Divided by 3, plus 1 to the third power. Check. Now I'm going to do exponents. Is there one? Yes, all the way at the end of the expression. So copy, 3 divided by 3, plus, and 1 to the third power is 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. Multiplication or division is next. Multiplication or division. There is a division problem. 3 divided by 3, 1, plus 1, no more. Check, check. Addition or subtraction. And we have just simply an addition. 1 plus 1 is to check check okay again in lines lines and not with you know with uh, some of you do it on the side you go like this I'm sorry this and then you I don't know you subtract over here I'm not making these numbers up you know do it like that try to do it in lines okay it's easier to follow part two Translate the sum of a number in 5 divided by 8. So I'm going to, and again, remember, always and I'll write this sum of a number in 5, comma, divided by 8. The easiest way to do these is always to just do it part by part. Sum. Automatically, I know I'm adding something. When am I adding? A number that I don't know of. And who? 5, comma, divided by 8. What does that comma represent in math? How are we going to show that here in this? There. Because we're adding these first and then divided by 8. If I take that parentheses out, I'm forced to do 5 divided by 8 first. So that parentheses protects it. Okay? Don't forget that. Dos. Twice a number. Twice a number. Twice a number is double a number. So twice, two times, a number that I don't know of. Less than. Less than, it means subtraction. And eight. Just be careful. Less than is a turnaround word. Turnaround means... Now switch the order here. Eight goes to the front. Two n goes to the back. Okay. Uh, the difference of 12 and a number. The difference of 12. Difference means subtraction. And what is subtraction? We're two things we're subtracting. 12 and a number. That's it. The quotient of M and 3 quotient. Remember I asked you to represent division as a fraction? The quotient of M and 3 subtracted from 20. Subtracted from 20. Now, subtract it. Subtract is 
a regular, if that was to subtract, we would have been done. But subtracted from is a turnaround word. So it's this way. Okay. Just the word subtract would have been this. But because it's subtracted from, you got to make a little switch. Okay. A number minus 5 times 8. A number that I don't know. Let's call it A. Minus 5 comma times 8. How are we going to represent that comma? With a, with a parenthesis around A and 5. Okay. Because the subtraction has to happen first and then be multiplied by 8. That's what that comma is there for in the sentence. The product of 5 and the difference, the product, okay, so the product of product means multiplying. What are we multiplying here? Of 5, so that's one of our factors. And who is on the other side? The difference of m and 4. So we're going to be multiplying 5 times the difference. Who is the difference between who? m and 4. So you're going to be multiplying 5 with the answer of whatever this would be. So we have to, again, protect that. So 5 is going to be multiplied against the difference of m and 4. So take the difference first and then multiply by 5. And that's your final answer. Okay? 3. Name the property shown and how it's used in the following equation. So let's see. 23 plus 3d plus 37. Is that the, so they said that that's the same thing as 23 plus 37 plus 3d. Let's see, 23, there's a 23 here, there's a 3d here, and 3d here. But notice that there is a switch, a 3d here, it's all the way at the end, and 37 moved to the middle. What did they do here? They switched these two. This came that way, and this came that way. Why? Because they wanted these two like terms, these two numbers who, are, who can be combined to be next to each other. What property allows that to happen? The commutative property. Okay, property allows you to move around. Okay, will that change the answer? No, it won't change the answer. Okay, so that's what's happening here. The commutative property allows you to move, and you end up getting 23 plus 37 plus 3D. Okay, 37 went from position 3 to position 2 in the middle, and 3D went all the way to the back. Okay, so that the, the property used here was the community property. Okay, uh, let's go four. Four, 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 four. Apply the distributed property. Ooh, birds attacking the bees. Birds, no, bird attacking pigs. Sorry. Here we go. That way, and that way. Remember. It's always attacking via multiplication in math. So we got 9 times n, m equals 9m, plus 9 times 4, 36. This expression and the one on the left are equivalent. 8, 6m cubed, minus 6. Multiply these two, the 8 and 6 is 48. Copy the variable with the exponent, minus 8 times 6 at the end, 48. 4, 2h squared plus 5b minus 7c to the fifth power. Again, same thing. Make sure you're attacking the out, not outside numbers, attacking every individual, every term inside the parentheses. is being multiplied by 4. 4 times 2 is 8. h squared plus 8 times, 4 times 5 is 20. b as in boy. Minus an 8 times, and sorry, 4 times 7 is 28, c to the 5th power, okay, last one, 5, 8p plus 4w plus 1, again, it's the same thing, factor outside, multiplying everyone inside by 5, okay, 5 times 8 is 40p, 5 times 4, the term in the middle is 20w, and 5 times just an old-fashioned one is just 5, okay? So this is the distributive property, distributing the number outside to every term inside the parentheses. 
And later on, I guess on the next page, you are going to work backwards, where I'm going to give you this, and you're going to factor out the greatest common factor, and uh, tell me what that looks like. Okay. So that was four. Now we're doing five. Tom wants to buy tomatoes that cost zero, 70 cents each and carrots that cost 35 cents each. Write an expression that can be used to find the total cost for any number of tomatoes and carrots. So, your expression would be 70 cents times T. Okay, so 70 cents for every tomato that you buy. So 70 cents times T plus what else you're buying? You're buying carrots, and your carrots cost 0 0.35 cents times C for every number of carrots. Do I need that dot? No, I'm just take that dot because I don't like it. 35 C. That's my expression. Let's see how that works. So, if I were to fight, buy five tomatoes and three carrots, how much did I spend? So. No matter what the quantity is, you can always use the expression. So I would get 70 cents times how many tomatoes? I bought five tomatoes plus 35 cents for one carrot. But I didn't buy one carrot. I bought three. That would be substitution. Replacing the letter T here for the five tomatoes and the C for three. Uh, this would be $3.50. And 35 cents, this would be the la 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 70 plus 35, a dollar and five cents. Okay, so three carrots would cost me a dollar five, the five tomatoes would cost me $3.50. And for a grand total, of, if I were to add this up, $4.65. So that would have been my total cost. Okay, so if you go back to this expression, I can use this expression for any number, whether I buy five tomatoes or ten tomatoes or fifteen tomatoes, all I have to do is substitute. Same thing here for the number of carrots. Okay. And then add them up add them both up to get my total. Okay. Says to rent a car for a single day, a single day only. The rental company would charge you sixty five dollars for the whole day. So plus 35 cents per mile that you drive. Write an expression that can be used to calculate the total cost. So let's say you rented a car for a whole day, just, just for today. You know you're going to pay no matter what, whether you drive it around the block or you go from here to Long Island or to the city, Manhattan, come back. No matter what, I'm going to pay $65. That's the bare minimum. I have to pay the rental company $65. Plus, so just to use the car, $65 plus now they're gonna charge me for every mile that I drive in it. Is it fair? Well, I guess so. So every mile it's what? It's 35 cents. So I'm gonna multiply 35 cents times what? The number of miles that I'm going to drive. And let's represent miles with the letter M. So this, so let's say I rent it, don't drive it anywhere. That's all I buy. That's all I pay, I'm sorry. Because if I don't drive anywhere, M would be what? Zero. Zero times zero, zero point thirty five is just zero. So I would pay sixty five dollars. Now, as soon as I paid, I would drive. I drove one mile. I rented a car. I don't know. Maybe my plans got canceled, and I ended up driving one mile. I would pay sixty five dollars to the company, plus one mile would be thirty five cents, giving me a total of sixty five dollars and thirty five cents. And he would go on and on and on. So in this case, how many miles did I drive? I drove thirty five thirty five miles. So here is $65 for just taking the car, plus 35 cents, and I drove 35 miles. I gotta multiply those two numbers, and let's see how much I would pay. So this is $65, and this, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be $12.25. Okay. Now the grand total would be uh, $77.25. I needed this. I needed that expression. Okay, to so be able to calculate my total. All right. Hopefully you're still here. Uh, <laughs> next go. Uh, let's see. Combining and then using the number properties to justify. 14a plus 12 minus 8a 
plus 33. Well, combine like terms. So the first thing, I don't need distributed property, but I need a community property. Community property will allow it to move me. So let me circle this, circle this, square this, rectangle that, and rectangle that. My like terms are going to be next to each other. Remember that you're moving the term with the operation inside, okay? That goes next to the 14 8, the plus 12, plus 33. My associative property will allow me to do what? It will allow me to put a parenthesis in between 14 8 and 8 because those are the two I want to group and add together. Plus 12 and 33. These two are also going to be grouped together. So, final answer simplify. 14a minus a, these two give me a total of 6a, plus mm, 45. Can I add these two? No, nope, because one has a variable, the other one does not. Okay, and that's this is what I'm looking for. <coughs> your properties that you're going to use to justify your steps as you combine them to simplify. 18a, nope, not that one. Now you have 5 plus 2a plus 6. Here you want your properties. First property is going to be the distributive property. That's going to, sorry, I wrote this ball. It's going to be 2 parentheses a plus 6. So 5 does nothing. Copy it. Plus, let's distribute. 2 times a is 2a, and 2 times 6 at the end is 12, and the sign here is plus. That's the distributive property now. I took the parentheses out, allows me to take the parentheses out. I'm going to use the community property to move things around. I want this and this guy are like terms, they're the same. So I'm going to move the plus 12 next to 5. I'm going to move the plus 2a to the back. Associative property is going to allow me to group these two together so I can add them. And the 2a stands alone. Simplifying, this gets to be 17 plus 2a. Uh, let's see, which one? Oof, long one. 8k3 plus 20k2 minus 8k3 again. Minus k2 plus 6. No distributive problem, but definitely moving around here. Associative. Sorry, not the associative. The community property. I'll move them some things around. K3s, everything that's a K3. AK3, there's another AK3, but it's a minus 8K3. Then there's some K2s, there's a K2, but it's a plus 20K2, which is going to go next to the minus K2. And then finally, plus 6. The associated property tells me I can group some of them. I'm going to group these two, 8K3 minus 8K3. I'm going to do the same thing here, the K2s. I'm going to combine them together. And the plus 6, there's nobody to add or subtract with. So, simplifying, 8K3 minus 8K3. If I have, that should definitely just be 0. I don't even have to write it. I'll write it anyway. Plus 20K2s minus one single K2 is 19K2 plus 6. If you want, you can leave your answer like this, or if you did not write the first part, you could have just, you're going to, it means that you probably have your answer like that, because this is just 0. Okay? Uh, um, last one, property-wise. 4, 3y, plus 6c, plus y, minus 3c. Properties. Let's see. Distributive property is the first one I want to use because I want to do this, the attack. Okay. Let's see. 4 and 3 is 12y. 4 and 6 is 24c. Don't forget the variable. And 4 times y is just 4y. The 4 does not attack the 3c because that's not in the parentheses, so we just copy that down. Uh, community. Let's move things, some things around. The 12y. And this 4y are like terms, so they're going to be next to each other. 24c, plus 24c, I'm sorry. And the minus 3c are going to also be next to each other. 
So the associated property will tell me that I can group 12y plus 4y. I'll group these two together, see what I get. And then on this side, I'm going to put these two together, 24, 3, and 3c. Simplifying, I get this and this is 16y plus and 24c minus 3c is 21c. And that's my final answer. Okay, uh, let's see. 28m, we're going backwards now. Let's do a little factoring here, okay? Factoring. So, in this case, let's see, uh, let's see, 2, let's go higher. I want to use 2. I'm just 2, 28 is 14m. 2 goes into 56, 28 times. I can go on. Can I use 7? I can. I will use. 7 goes to 14, 2 times. 7 goes into 28, 4 times. Oops, I can still go on again. 2 can go into 2 1 time, 1m, and 2 goes into 4 2 times. Can I go again? No, I cannot. You're going to take these three numbers on the side. That's your GCF, the product of these three numbers. 2 times 7 times 2, and that gives you the product is, or the GCF is 28. The 28 is the biggest number that goes into 28 and 56, so that is our number outside. We need our two terms inside, and that's going to be 1m, and the other one is going to be 2. If you want to distribute, just check your answer. 28 times 1m is 28m, and 28 times 2 is indeed 56, so our answer is correct. So you created a an equivalent expression. So remember, we started with this, and we created a different one, okay? The original one, I guess, if you want to call it even. Next one, 18a minus 48k plus 54m. All right, now let's think higher. Uh, 6 seems to go in all three numbers. 6, this will be 3a. 6 goes into 48 8 times, or 8k. And 6 goes into 54 9 times. So our answer is 6. There's nothing to multiply, it's the only number outside. Inside is 3a minus 8k plus 9m. Take a couple of seconds, and if you want to do the distributed property, just check. 6 times 3 is 18a, 6 times 8k is 48k, and 6 times 9m is indeed 54m. So our answer is correct. Okay. Uh, 12b plus 8f plus 6d, burgers, french fries, and drinks. So what was the order here? Well, let's find out what the order was. Let's pick uh, 2. You get 6 plus 4 plus 3. 2 goes into 12 6 times, 8 4 times, into 6 3 times. Good. Is there anything else we can do? No, we can't. No other number. There's nothing else besides one. So, if this was your total, the original order was two people went in there and they each ordered six burgers, four drinks, four french fries, I'm sorry, and three drinks each. Okay? And that combined gave us that. Let's see what else. Last one, 77. Guys, 28 minutes. Sorry I'm making this so long, but you can hopefully fast forward some of these if you know and you're very comfortable. 21k plus 49y minus 84. Okay, so these looks like uh, multiples of 7. So I'm going to try that first. It might not be 7, but it seems to work. So, 7, that works 11 times. 7 goes into 77 11 times. 11h4. 7 goes to 21 3 times, K2. 7 goes into 49 7 times, 7Y. And 7 goes into 84 12 times. Is there any other number I can use? Let's see. Nope, 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 nope. That's my final answer. So, again, 7 is the number, my factor outside. And the terms inside are going to be 11 H4 minus 3K2 plus 7Y minus 12, which I did this, attack them, I would get that expression on top. Okay. Okay, Maria wrote the expression 5 more than the quotient of 6 divided by n. Write in a 
write an algebraic expression for Maria and evaluate the expression when n equals 4. Let's see what that means. So, she wrote the expression 5 more than the quotient. Okay, 5 more, five more than the quotient. Quotient means division. Division of what? Of 60 divided by n. So there's your expression. 5 more than the quotient, which is a division of what? 60 divided by n. Good. So that's my expression. So now they're telling me that n equals 4. So I'll go to the expression, I'll write 5 plus 60. Instead of n at the bottom, I can write 4. Let's solve this now. Well, this is a division problem, so order of operation tells me I'm going to have to do this first. 60 by, divided by 4. 60 divided by 4 is 15. Now I can add these two. Final answer is 20. So when n is 4, this expression is equal to 20. Okay. Um, to change the Fahrenheit from Fahrenheit to Celsius, the following equation is used. C equals 5, C for Celsius, by the way, 5 over 9, parentheses, Fahrenheit minus 32. So, on this particular given day, temperature was 86 Fahrenheit. So, what, did, what temperature was that in Celsius, or what the rest of the world uses? We don't C equals 5. Divided by 9, Fahrenheit, I can change. I know what the temperature is in Fahrenheit, which is 86. It was 86 that day, so let's see how to solve this. Uh, C equals, Celsius equals 5 over 9. Let's do the parentheses. 86 minus 32 is 454. So, multiply. remember this is being multiplied here. Okay, open it up. 54. 86 minus 32 is 54. How are we going to continue this? Well, I can put the 54 over 1 because that's a whole number. How do we multiply fractions? Top times top, bottom times bottom. So 5 times 54, 5 times 4 is 20, goes to 270. And 9 times 1 is simply 9. So I can simplify that even better. 270 divided by 9 is 30. Okay, so Celsius. So I get that C equals 30 degrees Celsius. So in a, this particular bright summer day, the temperature of 86 Fahrenheit is equivalent to 30 Celsius. That's it. If you can do this without any issues, you'll be more than fine. Okay. So if um, you have any questions, please write email. Okay. Thank you.